There's something about seasons and times that people need to know. The Bible said if you see anyone or any beast or anyone in honor and does not know, it says it's like a beast that perishes. Listen, you know we've been shouting since you're a king. People do not understand one thing we've been saying. You are born a king, but you need to be made a king. You can be born as a king by inheritance, but the making of a king requires training. There's something they call king's training. They train you to become a king. They, they teach you on the king's way. They teach you the pattern of a king. They tell you, listen, because you think you are supposed to be the king, doesn't necessarily mean they will make you the king. Because there are traits they need to put it inside of you to become a king. A king can judge properly. A king is fair. A king is wise. A king does not get emotional. So there's something called the bond of a king, but there's something called the making of a king. We are seeing a lot of potential kings that don't become kings. It is understanding that separates men from boys. If you have understanding, you begin to enter into the deeper dimensions of God. If you have a weapon of understanding, you will do what everybody is doing. We don't need house of slaves. We need house of kings. If it's just 200 kings, it's okay. More than 20,000 slaves. Do you understand what I'm talking about now? So you must understand times and season. So one of the ways that you need to posture yourself this period is understanding of what is going on in this country. Understanding what is happening in the realm of the spirit. You must understand the season we are in. I had two weeks ago. Now, the reason why I do that is not to show my face very often. The reason why I do that is to repeat because I discovered that a lot of people don't hear messages. And um, it could be very painful when you prepare a message and people don't hear. So we've asked ourselves, how do we help people? So one of the ways we help them is by repeating messages. So we repeat those messages, you will hear it in different ways. We we'll repeat it in a drama, we we'll repeat it in the music, we we'll repeat it in different forms until it becomes flesh. I've come to understand that the word that does not become flesh is not usable. You can hear scriptures, you can listen to messages until the word becomes flesh, it's not usable. A lot of people don't experience the profitability of the word because the word has not become flesh. You wonder why people attend great churches, when I use the word great churches, I mean where there are very strong word and revelation, and when you go to those churches and you attend and you are still wondering, if you are in this church, I'm not a member of this church. I just listen to the message of the minister. I'm not even a member of certain churches. For example, the church in Bahamas. I'm not a member of Man's Morose Church, but I listen in the service. I listen to the messages. And I look at the members in the church. I feel I'm growing faster than even the people who are sitting in the church because I practice what he says. I write what he says. I go there to evaluate myself on what he says. Same thing when you attend different meetings. The reason why people are not changing is because they are not practitioners. And I keep using the word. If you are not a practitioner, you cannot experience the practice. It's so simple. You can be a medical doctor and be in the bank. So we have a lot of medical doctors who are in the bank. We have a lot of medical doctors who are financial experts. We have a lot of... Um, a Greek, I wanted to say a Greek, but some people were forced into a Greek, not that they went to study a Greek. Okay, don't look at the person by your side. He's not talking about you. You just, because you didn't pass jam properly, like some of us, you wanted to do medicine, you ended up doing botany. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, because I didn't know how I arrived at studying plant. <laughs> My journey was to be a medical doctor. And I studied so hard to be a medical doctor. But your country did not give me medicine. <laughs> but because of the pressure of the country, I needed to go to the university. Because you see, you hear it every time. Your parents will tell you, just enter. Have you ever just enter before? <laughs> in those days, well, I'm not talking about now. In those days, just say, just enter. Just make sure you are in what? You are in university. <laughs> then they will tell you that you're rough it if you come out. Because you know why? 
Because the system has been created in such a way that it doesn't matter what you study in Nigeria. The moment you come out, you just discover that, that your brother works in Shell. Your sister works in uh, GT Bank. Your auntie works in Nestle. Or you, when you just come out, you just say, okay, let them do graduate test. I'll be, I'll be um, Caro. When you do graduate test or graduate um, whatever, preparation, the moment you do those tests and you pass, even if you study Yoruba first class, I get what I'm saying, you do interview, you can even do better than the person that studied um, accounting. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then they give you a job. It's not like that in the U.S., to be sincere. If you don't study something specifically for your work, they will even call you for any test. Do you get it? But it's different. So there are some of us that went like that to study botany. I was studying botany. All the plants they were calling, I don't know their name. I remember one time I was doing my finals. I was doing well, though, by cramming and making sure I pass. Not by understanding. You know, there's cramming and understanding. I don't understand the plants. I don't know how they behave. I don't know. I just crammed those names, kept it here. And those names were very terrible. I can't even remember them now. When I was doing my project, I remember that I went to one wilderness. And because the plant I was looking for was in the wilderness. So I went to the wilderness, water the plant. You can be going there, just be watching the plant. I was looking at the plant like this, writing what I'm not seeing, copying the textbook to make sure it's just filing in with what I think should be happening. You understand what I'm saying? That was my project. But well, praise be the Lord. I graduated. Praise God. That's why you can see me here today. All right. But I am not a practitioner. When I came out with Bodney, my, my mom said, oh, you are not a Bodney. I said, yes, mom. And I said, okay, no problem. Your neighbor is planning to do something for Lagos State. They want to plant. They want to put flowers. The man I came to meet me. He <laughs> said, you put up a proposal. Uh -huh. it was <laughs> my mom was expecting me to put up botanical name and proposal. Nothing was happening. <laughs> <laughs> I was not a practitioner. I came out with a graduate certificate, but I was not a practiced, a practitioner, a botanist. Botanist, there's a level. When you see, when you see a zoologist in the US acting excitedly with zoology, you'll be wondering, zoology, with all excitement, it is their lifestyle because they are practitioners. You see, if you are not a practitioner of the word of God, you cannot experience the word of God. That's what I'm going to. So you come to church, you read the word, you study the word, all that is still on the surface. Until you practice the word, you cannot experience the word. So we call some people word practitioners. Not word carriers. You carry Bible, you carry all kinds of Bible, you carry all kinds of Bible, but you are not a practitioner. You carry T.D. Jakes, T.D. Dakes, is it Dakes? Dakes Bible. You carry, you carry, you carry uh, Scofield. You carry, you carry all kinds of translation, 24 translation, 36 translation. You know, in those days, what they used to scare people is that, thank God, thank God for, thank God for, for online scriptures. People don't scare people anymore now. In those days when you're coming to service, this is the way people carry their Bible. This is the way the people carry their Bible. It is the size of your Bible that gives us a sense that you are so powerful. Even though you don't read it. You know, people just, you see, Dix is like this, very big. Scoff it, very mighty. You just come. And in those days, my friends used to, you know, we used to pose with it. You just carry your Bible with different colors. You just, you know, but no practice. Tell somebody, be a practitioner. No, tell somebody, say, be a practitioner. Put on my slide. So, so that is that is what we are doing. So you see us repeat things in Kicks Academy. We do it. We repeat those things. We're saying the same thing, but putting it in your mind until it becomes uh, 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 a, 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 an established position in your heart, so that your subconscious will capture your conscious in such a way that when you're dreaming, you'll be dreaming those things. How many of you? Uh, all the singles that came for the singles video. Let's celebrate them. Singles video. Some of you don't know what happened to us on that day. For six hours, we were praying. Six hours, we were worshiping. Thank God for Minister um, David. It was a very strong meeting. I don't know about you, but when I go home, I don't know about you single, when I go home, when I go home, I couldn't sleep. So for a few hours. But the moment I slept, I was dreaming of heavenly stuff. Listen, you can't, you can't be dreaming of somebody chasing you in the night after you have done some engagement. You know the reason why you keep seeing people chasing you in the night or you find yourself eating in the night or all those funny stuff that um, you go and pay those charlatans to deliver you. No, so why you find those things happening is because of information coming in. 
You see, scripture says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it come the issues of life. So when it comes into your heart, the Bible said, out of the motives of business, dream comes. So when a lot of things have entered, businesses have entered, you now begin to have certain dreams. But when you have prayed six hours, five hours, eight hours, and you are spending time with the Lord, the only thing you can be seeing is cherubims flying. You'll be seeing angels ascending and descending. You will not be hearing things like, ah, mommy or mama, no, 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 you'll be hearing those things. Why? Because you've soaked yourself in the presence of the Lord. So I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you this season that you be involved in what we are doing. Ah, we are doing things, so oh. we are doing things. Three things, and I remember what Mina said, and I and I caught it, and I've been able to put a bit of alignment to that understanding. Three things that we're doing so that we are very, very involved. The first one is that we're in a king's academy, we're in a king's training. We're training kings. You're born a king, but you need to be trained a king. You need to know how king, how they do. There are some behaviors of kings. Get me? There are nuances of kings. Uh, kings, there's a way they eat. You don't eat anyhow as a king. There's a way they dress. You don't. You dress. You dress like a king. You don't open up yourself. You don't see. You don't see kings dress anyhow. That was why. That was why. Church, church, church. Listen. That was why David's wife was angry with him. Some of you don't understand why David's wife was behaving that way. You know, some of us just started abusing that lady. You know, when David danced onto the Lord and he started removing his robe, you know, all of us were just abusing the woman. Ah, what's wrong with you? Don't you know he was praising God? No, the woman was looking at David and saying, you're a king. You're not supposed to be exposing yourself, all right, in front of women or in front of people like this. You're disgracing us. Now, that was what the woman was saying. But the woman did not just have an understanding that the person that he was exposing himself to is a person that covers nakedness. Because David was not really exposed because he was dancing before his father. If he was doing it before men, then he's exposed. But if he's before his father, nakedness in that sense is allowed. Because in the presence of the Lord, his, his, his covering will cover your nakedness. Because there's no dignity as it were before your father. Church, are you here? So that's what I'm bringing you to. So in the next few minutes, I will make sure I try to attack some areas, God helping me, to be able to continue where I stopped. That's why we did that summary. So that, that what we did was just a summary so that you have an understanding. For people that did not attend church that day, you now have an idea that, okay, what did they do? So that when I continue, I don't need to go back again. Does that make sense? It's not because I'm trying to show my face. It's because so that you can understand where we stopped the last time. So some of you will know, I mentioned that what is the divine posture of kings this season? That's what we're talking about. What is the opposition for transition? How do you position in this season? And I mentioned it somewhere. People could not believe me. I say in this same place that all of you are saying there is so much economic hardship. People are exchanging money. And I told somebody here, I saw somebody, even one of my, <laughs> I won't mention the name, one of my very good friends is currently enjoying himself somewhere now. He doesn't even understand that there's an economic issue going on in your country. I get what I'm saying. People are exchanging dollars. People are buying tickets. Tickets worth 4 million, 5 million, 6 million. You will almost wonder, say, why are you going to? Don't you see that there's serious hardship in your country? The other day I was traveling and I entered into the plane. I was expecting that entering into the plane, because I saw the, 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 the flight ticket, the cost of, of ticket, I was expecting I must not see anybody in business class. I was expecting I would not see anybody in first class. So when, when I entered, I now discovered that the whole first class was full. You now be checking them. How, how did you guys, how did you, because when you're seeing the figure, how did you people enter here? And they enter, you know, with a free heart. You don't, listen, you don't enter first class and you struggle to pay it. I get what I'm saying. Modawuni, Modawuni, give over first class. No, you don't do that. You, you don't save money to enter first class. I get what I'm saying. You don't say, I bet give me one K, I bet give me one thousand dollars. No, if you are entering to first class, it's because you can accommodate first class. Talk to me, church. Oh, you are not here. Talk to me, church. Somebody said, Do you see them do marketing on limousine? Do you see marketing on limousine? Do you see somebody come to market and say, I'm selling limousine? Have, have you ever heard that before? Rose Royce, have you seen? How many, how many promo do you see on Rolls Royce? Oh, we are doing promo. Buy one, take one free. Have you heard that before? <laughs> have you heard that before? The people that buy it know where they are selling it. Talk to me, church. You know, if it was Subaru, you want to buy it, you, you, there's a place to, oh, if it's Krupe, you know, you, you, there's where, aha. Is it colloquial? Okay, sorry. Okay, you know, you know, but 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 when it comes to Rolls Royce, 
People that buy it know what you say. There's a particular state. I can't remember the state now in the U.S. It's a few people that have that particular kind of car. Was it Rolls Royce or something? He said they know themselves, so they have a club. They have maybe about, maybe about 10 of them in that particular state. They have a club. Okay? If you don't buy it, you don't even know there's a club. <laughs> How many of you? Okay. Is there, is there a Toyota club? For some of us that have to. <laughs> Praise God. No, the point is not to say that you don't have a car. That's not the issue here. The point I'm making here is that, listen, because you are valuable, I get what I'm saying, you are a king. Because you are valuable, they will find you. you listen, you don't need to market yourself. You'll be found. Why? Because you're a king. And listen, the people that will find you is not the general people. It's not public people. <sighs> you're not here. It's not general people that will find you. It's special people. We sat on a scripture on, on, on Friday, we sat on the scripture of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. How many of you remember that scripture? We sat on that scripture and we meditated and we're speaking through that scripture. And we said, hey, you're a what? You're a chosen generation. Oh, singles, you're not here. Help me here. You're a what? You're a chosen generation. Uh-huh. You're a what again? You're a royal priesthood. What again? You're a holy nation. What again? You're a what? Uh-huh. Who, that, that you may show forth he, the praise of him who did what? Who called you? Out of what? Out of darkness. Into what? His marvelous life. Come on, tell somebody you're a chosen generation. You're a chosen generation. No, look at that person one more time. Say, you're a chosen generation. Oh, please provoke that person. Say, you're a chosen generation. Oh, tell the person you're a royal priesthood. Tell the person you're a holy nation. Then this is the one I love so much. Tell the person you're special. Oh, look at the person one more time. Say, you're special. I know they've been calling you names since you've been born, but look at the person. I say, you're special. I know you've been meeting all kinds of issues since you've been born, but look at the person say, you are special. You are special. Okay, the person is not telling you. Tell yourself, say, I am, I am special. Oh, glory to God, to special people in the house. We give God praise. You know, people always wonder, why do we have to keep, why do we keep saying this thing when we come to service? The reason why we keep saying it is because your silence can be taken for permission. And the enemy can establish your silence because you're not saying anything. Why would the scripture say that let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom the Lord has redeemed? Why is he saying it? He's redeemed already. You know why some people say, why am I saying it? Why do I have to say I'm redeemed? But God says, say it. Say it. You know why you say it? Because with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Say it. Say it. As you're saying it, salvation is coming into operation. Hallelujah. So I mentioned this. Remember I mentioned this. I mentioned Understanding season is one of the ways you posture yourself. Understanding, your, I mentioned the issue about the mouth. You need to be careful of the mouth. This season, be careful. The Bible said even a fool, when he withhold himself from talking, he is considered to be wise. Be careful of how you talk. Be careful of how you say things. Don't join them to say things. I told you one day I entered for a long time. I've not entered that bus before. So I said, let me, sometimes, hey, hey, all of us that drive. Every, listen, guys, guys, most of you that you all, in the last 20 years, you've been driving. Go and enter bus, Carol, enter bus. You know, some of you don't know what's going on. You see, all of you, they would have sold Nigeria before all of us know sometimes. Because you know why? You are always in your car, always in your car. You come out in the morning, you come, enter bus. Just say today, let me even enter bus. So I wanted to also try it. You just enter bus, let me see what's going on. You know, oh boy, when I entered the bus, man of God, from the period I entered the bus, they were cursing themselves, abusing themselves. By the time I left, I knew sin. Sin had entered all of my system. <laughs> Even without me knowing, I, I can see myself cursing someone. I get one. Because they've abused, they've abused all the president. They've abused Igbo. They've abused Yoruba. They don't care whether you are Igbo or Yoruba. They're, they've called all names. Then conductor is yeah, been this one. Conductor is saying this one is too slow. Mama, why are you doing like this? Come down, sir. You all kinds have happened in that bus. And you are thinking people should be normal. You now see the same person. You are not seeing the same person. Will come out, and you think the person should be normal. People are not normal in this country. That God is keeping us. Ah, uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you know that for you to be coming to church and you are still all together, you don't know it's the grace of God. People, you became people. Mad people are walking on the street. The only reason is that they are dressed up. I get what I'm saying. Mad people are dressed up on this city. They are walking, but they are dressed up. I'm praying that one day, you know, just see. You won't see. God, go for. God help us not to see. You just see somebody dressed. All of a sudden, you just remove the shirt. He said, 
You shall be hearing, ah, oh, just me, oh, just me, oh, just me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. How are you containing it? No, no, I need to ask. How are you containing the pressure of this country? How? No, I'm sorry, but how are you doing it? How, how are you doing it? <laughs> it's been a long time I look for fuel. It's been a long time. Few weeks ago, because I made a wrong move, I made a wrong move. I didn't plan very well, and I was supposed to go to Ottawa. Few weeks ago, I experienced your experience. <laughs> Man of God, I drove, I, me, me and PA, I drove, I was looking for, she knew I was angry. I was angry not, not at anybody. I was angry at myself for not planning a day before. I didn't know how I missed it. We're not looking for foil. I got to a place. All the strategy I used to use in those days <laughs> of how to enter, <laughs> how to bend in. <laughs> I didn't know that the methodology has changed. I'm an old school. <laughs> how to buy fuel. How do you <laughs> I didn't know how those methodologies have changed. Nobody was looking at me. I said, how will I survive today? And the thing was showing red. You know how the devil is telling you, I will disgrace you today. I will disgrace you today. I said, the devil is a liar. I said, and I, and I got to a place. Oh, I thank God for my wife. I got to a place. My wife said, don't worry, don't worry. Let, let's, let, let's go to this place. I just parked. My wife just entered into the petrol station. Just went to, I just saw her talking to one woman, you know, because I was just boiling inside. My, I was just boiling. I said, what kind of country is this? Eh? You have the money. <laughs> you know, if you don't have the money, it's another thing. We are almost saying, <laughs> but they'll be using for and say, oh, I can't sell. Ha. That's how PA helped us. And we're able to buy, what did we buy? We buy 20 liters, 20 liters. And I should not call the cost because you will just be angry with me. Because as I was paying that money, I knew that they oppressed me. <laughs> you know, there's something called oppression. You just, you bring out the money. You are almost saying, You know that kind of prayer. I don't want to say the word. <laughs> but we are bringing out the money. And the woman was looking at me. Ah, hey, 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 <laughs> it's like saying, if you don't want to buy, and, and to be sincere, if you see the people waiting, if you see the people waiting, that if this man doesn't want to buy, let's pay for it. This man, we want to go to where we're going to. How can you buy that kind of fuel finish? You, 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 who was telling me? Was it Pastor Sam that was telling me? You know, in those days, I used to think that when you use AC, it affects your fuel. How many of us have thought like that before? No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't too. Go and check the technology. Me too, I thought so. So I now suffered. I suffered. I removed the fuel. I removed, I removed the AC. I was not inside the heat. Inside the heat. When I now caught the revelation, are you serious? I put on the whole AC. <laughs> I said, what's going on here? Praise God. Man, ignorance is bad. Glory to God. Oh, oh, look at somebody. Pastor just helped you there. Pastor just helped you there. <laughs> not this one. You put on the AC. You never say, ah, ah, the fuel is going down. No, it's your mind. It's your mind that is going down. <laughs> <laughs> I thought like that too. Okay. So I mentioned have strong expectation. So I said this year, this season, please have expectation. Something is coming. Tell someone something is coming. Oh, that person does not believe it. Tell someone something is coming. You know, I was telling you, was it last, was it on Sunday when we're praying? I said some people will release a new product. Did I say that? Talk to me, sure. Did I say that? That you should go about and do your new product. One of my lovely sisters, Kemi, stand up on your feet. Look at her behind there. Look at her behind there. Camera, can you catch that lady? She, she has released a new product. A, a new, she's in, she's in the um, cosmetic um, um, industry. She has released, released her own lips. Is it lipstick you call it, there? Yeah? Lip, huh? Lip gloss. Our own design. I'm not doing marketing, but I feel I should celebrate this. Now, you see, when sometimes, when a word goes forth, press. Press. Because when a word goes forth, there's a grace that comes out. <laughs> all right. So, so there's a, you, you're, you're going to see it on the platform, all right? She has released, we're going to be, we're going to be doing the promo very soon. Another person that released a product recently that we're, we're about to, we're also going to show the church very soon, all right, is Reverend Bendega. Reverend Bendega, stand up on your feet. Let's celebrate, Reverend. 
Reverend Re released a product on, <laughs> if you read, it will just help your life in grammar. It help your life in grammar. It's a solid book on how to help your grammar. It's going to be coming out very soon. It's going to be coming. Now, ask your neighbor, what are you releasing, man? What are you releasing? No, no, look at the person. What's coming out? What's coming out? Get an answer. What's coming out? What's coming out? I said, get an answer. What's coming out? A new product? A new concept? A new idea? What's coming out? Okay, if you don't know yet, tell the person by faith, something new is coming very soon. No, say it by faith. Say something new is coming very soon. Let the person know my product is coming very soon. My product is coming soon. Tell the person, you know, my design is coming very soon. Tell the person, you know, my innovation is coming very soon. No, if you are sure, shout hallelujah if you are sure. So have a strong expectation. That's what I said. And if you have to have a strong expectation, because God himself has an expectation already of you. He said, my thought towards you is not the thought of evil, but of good. To give you what? An expected hand. So he's already thinking ahead of you. That's why scripture says, surely there's an expectation. There's an expectation. There's an end. The, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Okay? Okay, then I told you, be expectant. I mentioned this. God is looking forward to this. Don't be driven by failures or all of this stuff. Don't be driven by it. I mentioned all of this. I mentioned that, hey, you need to be ready for war at all times this season. Be ready for war. And that's why you need to join these prayers. Make sure you're part of a prayer. Be ready for war at all times. I told you, be territory driven. Always think in territories. There's a reason why I keep shouting, you're a city, you're a city. I keep using those words, you're a city, you're a city. Anytime you go to a place, think like a city. Don't think like a street. Think like a what? A city. Think like a nation. Always have a behavior of a nation, a behavior of a city. I keep telling you guys that. Everywhere the place of your feet shall step upon, he has given unto you. Have that concept of city. Have that concept. Then I mentioned, I said, do what? Improve your what? Spiritual discernment. And that was when I showed you one video. I'm not going to show you again. I showed you one video of where they have different kinds of things going on now. Because you see, they are all taking advantage of our poverty. They are taking advantage of our ignorance. You know, people are in pain. May God not make you get to a pain, you'll be looking for help anywhere. Amen. Oh, you didn't hear what I said, let me repeat it again. May God not make you get into a pain, you'll be looking for help anywhere. Amen. I remember there was one woman like that, a Baptist woman. She was going through serious sickness, disease-wise. Do you know she was looking for help? She went as far to go and look for people that pray in Benin Republic. And she looked for it to an extent that when she got there, she sat on the floor. That was what she was praying, on bare floor. They treated her with all disdain in the picture of prayer. She died. Listen, do you know there's some kind of need that will hit you? You won't know where you're going to. You'll be seeking for help in strange places because of the pain that you're going through. Oh, you don't want to talk about people who have faced several issues, possibly about giving birth to children or possibly about their children that were sick. I, I, had, I had my junior sister who died was, was, was a sickle seller, was a sickle cell person. And, and he had, he, she, had, she had a major issue with tuberculosis. And, and we, we, we struggled with it all through, all through when she was a teenager. My mom, my mom was going, my mom and my dad was going to, they were going to, they were going everywhere you can think about. From traditionalist to, they used that girl for, as a specimen. He, she was an experiment to different people. I will never forget, I was young, but I could see a lot of things. Sometimes my sister would start crying. She won't know what next they're going to do with her. All of a sudden, somebody will come. All of a sudden, somebody will say, let's take her here. We've gone to uh, Elele in Enugu. We've gone to, we've gone to several places. Because of her, our parents were taking us several places looking for help. That's why I was, that's why I told you my story about how I entered, where they started cutting me, where they started doing all kinds of chanting on me just to see that I don't die. Yeah, because a lot of things were going on. May you not fall into a problem. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. May you not fall into a problem where they will give you another option and you say, let's try it. Even though you have Jesus, they'll just say, ma, let us try it. Let's try it. You, you notice that you've been serving God, but that one is not working. Can we just try this one? Let's just try it. That's all. Just say, okay, okay. At least he's still God. 
Then they're now busy saying, it's still God. God is still in it. Before you know what's happening, you started drinking things. Before you know what's happening, you started putting sand. Before you know what's happening, you started putting something under your bed. Before you know, all of a sudden, you're becoming, you're becoming a ritualist. You're carrying things. You're putting on your neck. All of a sudden, you're becoming a ritualist. And you don't know. You don't know. The, 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 the kingdom of the devil is not divided. It's not divided. The moment you cross, what normally happens is that the devil will start planting you, start positioning you. He will make you look good, but he's taking you somewhere so that he can destroy you. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So please, pay attention. There are fake prophets everywhere. Fake prophets have been released upon the nation. And it's prophetic. Fake prophets are prophetic. It means it's prophetic because they have been prophesied. He said, in the last days, listen, in the last days, fake prophets, people that will tell themselves they are Christ, will come and they will show signs and wonders. Signs and wonders is not a proof of ministry. It's not a proof that you are going somewhere. You will hear signs, you will hear wonders. There are fake prophets coming. Fake prophets are here. And I mention all of these are the scriptures to guide them. I mention all of these. Watch out for all of these. Make sure you're very careful. Make sure you be consistent so that you can sense. Because if you're not consistent, you can't sense. You need discernment to know what is going on. You need discernment. Okay, now, so let me jump into today. God helping me. Let me jump into today. Now, everybody say give and sacrifice more this season. Tell someone say give and sacrifice more this season. No, say it like you're giving it. Say the word give and sacrifice more this season. Now, let me tell you something. And, I, and I've learned this one. You know, when people come to meet me and say, Pastor, I'm broke. When people come to them and say, Pastor, I'm looking for money. When people, I would just be laughing. I'll be looking at that person. I'll be watching the person. I'll be watch, what is your lifestyle? How are you living? What is your pattern of living? How can you prosper this season? How can you rule this season? How can you come to a point, David? How can you come to a point that you will not lack anything this season? Do you know there are some people that are not lacking anything this season? Their situation is like the situation of Jesus Christ. The situation is that if we need bread, can say, how many breads are there? Please bring it. You will break it and to multiply. Their situation is like situation when they want to pay tax. He said, please, can you get a fish on this other side? Any coin you see there, bring it. Pay for tax for me. It means they have what they call the very present help in the time of trouble. There are people that are operating that concept right now. Anytime there's a need, there's help. Anytime issue comes up, there's somebody solving it. People are operating that dimension. How do you think people arrive there? They don't arrive there. No, no. They don't arrive there only by praying. A lot of us can pray. A lot of us can fast. But we don't come into understanding instruction on how to work it. The word works. The word works, but people don't understand how to work it. You must know how to divide the truth and work the word. If you don't work the word, the word can't work for you. I have been in a situation, and I keep explaining to people, listen, when it comes to financial empowerment, when it comes to entering to the grace of a blessing, it's not by prayer. You pray to receive instruction. You follow instructions, you receive access. You get access to be blessed. You pray. You get instruction. Instruction gives you access. Access brings the blessing. But a lot of people, they pray, but they don't hear the instruction. Or people hear, they don't get into the instruction to get access. Give and sacrifice this season. People keep wondering. He said, how is this? How are these people doing it? To tell you the truth. Anytime you ask us, how are we doing it? Are you really ready to hear it? Talk to me, church. Are you really ready? Sometimes when I flip on the billionaires in this country, and I watch their video clips, and I'm checking, how did you arrive there? And I'm checking, I'm watching those video clips. I'm not watching it to appreciate. You know some of you that just watch IG, you just watch IG and be laughing. I don't know why you'll be watching your Instagram or Reels, all the things you enjoy there. <laughs> and that's all you do for hours. You don't come out with wisdom. You do all of that and don't come out with wisdom? No, anytime I go on Reels, anytime I go on, on Instagram, I'm picking nuggets. Speaking wisdom, I'm changing something. I'm saying, oh no, I'm not going to treat my staff this way again. No, no, no. I'm going to change the way we do promotion now. I'm going. To, I'm picking wisdom. I'm. Pe how does this impact on my business? How does it impact on my family wealth? How do, all of a sudden, I'm thinking. Some people that are close to me, some people that work with me, they know how I always check on them. I check their wisdom. I don't listen. I don't look at you and say you are too small. You will not believe it. Muiwa is one of my financial advisor. Muiwa here that you are looking. This guy is a dangerous guy. So some of you don't know. Okay, be there. You'll be thinking people that no, no. Normal 
people are not sitting with us. Normal people are not sitting with us. There are some dangerous people sitting by your side. They have grace. I don't say, ah, I'm my wife's pastor. <laughs> if I want to check anything now, I just send it. Mua, please check. True or false? Mua, will check. Uh, pastor, it's good. Okay, thanks. We've been doing this journey how many years now? Five? Five years. This journey. I know how to push things. Church, church, don't be going, eh, I'm older, I'm older. Catch wisdom. Says catch wisdom. Catch wisdom. There's a younger person that has more wisdom than you in some situation. All these things that you are struggling, you are carrying age. Age will not deliver the product to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Age will not deliver it. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. There are people who know better than you in some areas. Humble to learn. Just sit down and say, okay, how are you doing this stuff? How are you doing it? Learn it. You pray. I agree. You join all prayer times. I agree. But you're not, you're not spending time to understand what works. Give and sacrifice this season. So anytime we're coming and we tell people, join Dominion Partner and we're coming, we say do this. People will be looking at them and say, leave them, Jerry, all of them, they know themselves. Leave them. Leave us. Leave us. No problem. Leave us. There's some things we're seeing. Some people are not seeing it. So I drove out. <laughs> Me and someone drove out three Saturdays ago. I've never done that type of drive before. I just drove out, you know. Uh, time. I just drove out and we're going around Lagos. And as we're going around Lagos, I was just telling, I don't know how that understanding came on me. I just had this understanding. And I was telling the person I was driving with, I said, man, they are suffering in this country. You know that understanding just came on me that I'm not in your country. I don't know why I got down. That understanding just dawned on me that I'm not in your economy. And I was driving, myself and this person. I said, man, people are going through a lot in this, in this country. I said, do you see what happened here? Do you see what happened? And we're going to some places to check some things. Say, man, this economy is affecting a lot of people. And I kept reminding myself, I'm not in your economy. I am not in your economy. I am not in your economy. You need to practice your own economy. That's what we're saying. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of your crops. A generous person will do what? Will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be what? Will be refreshed. Look at what he said. Look at King Solomon, the king went to Gibeon, near Jerusalem, where he sued the tabernacle and the bronze to sacrifice there, for that was a great high place to sacrifice. 1,000 bond offerings. 1,000 bond offerings. Jesus, why is this woman breaking an annual wage on your head alone? Ah, uh-uh. ah, Jesus you are too proud. You are too greedy. How can somebody take annual wage, annual wage, and break it and be pouring it on your head? Ah, uh, uh, take it easy now. The poor are there. Poor people are there. Let them give to the poor. Most people that talk like that, they don't give. You know, most people always say, the poor are there, the poor are there. Check them, check them. They don't do anything with the poor. It's the people that are doing something with the poor. They don't need to shout it. They are doing things with the poor. They are creating scholarship with the poor. They are doing some things you don't know about. But you see, the people that always shout it, do this to the poor, they don't do anything. They don't do anything. Listen, I'm always even grateful. People that do things don't need to say they are doing things. Because anytime you keep saying you're doing things, you're not doing anything. Church, are you here? So he said, look at what he did. Solomon went up the same scripture. Now, your giving will distinguish you this season. Church, your giving will distinguish you this season. You'll be wondering, Pastor, why are you talking about this? The economy is hard. No, the economy is soft. And I, in the days of Isaac, the Bible said there was firming in the land. Listen carefully. Isaac took his load to run like his dad, which was a trend. A trend, Jackpa syndrome started in Genesis. Everything you see going on now has happened in Genesis. It's not new. How, could you, well, how would you even think that there's anything new under the sun? So everybody was living. Isaac also went to the embassy, Egyptian embassy, to take his visa so that he will go to Egypt. He had gone there to receive the visa. They had given him the visa because I, I'm talking to some people that are here. You know all those EJ eh, 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 in prayer. You know those EJ eh, eh, in prayer. They just say, if the Lord gives me the visa, it means the Lord wants me to go. Let me touch that piece. People didn't get that. You know there's some prayer you pray. Lord, I'm going to apply now. If you are the one that want me to go, 
let them give me. If you are not the one, let them not give me. Listen, the Lord does not want you to go, but they will give you. <laughs> let, me see, let me tell you how God will pray. Let me tell you how God will pray. God will make sure they give you. Then after they've given you, God will say, I have. You are not going to. Ah, Lord, how would I go through all of this? And they give me the visa. The visa that they are not giving people, they gave me. And you say, I should not go. You are not in it. As many that are led by the Spirit, those are the ones that are the son of God. Do you know Isaac picked up and he picked his children. He was going to go to Egypt and God showed up. God said, don't go. I know why shouldn't I go? Don't go. There's a secret everybody doesn't know that is going on in Jeddah. Uh -uh. What secret is that? Plant here. You see, everybody going, they're coming back to meet you. Plant. Ah, as he said, okay, Lord. Because as he has seen the hand of God on Abraham, his father. So he planted. The Bible said, he started reaping. He started reaping. Just imagine people calling Isaac from Egypt. Just Isaac, how far? How's he going? I hear your president is terrible. I hear you people are just dying anyhow. I hear they're killing people. Yes, they're killing people. <laughs> the president, we don't even know what's going on with this president. But what's going on? 1,000, 2,000 estates are popping out of Isaac. Ah, products are popping out of Isaac. Why the people in Egypt that don't have names anymore are gone? Isaac is planting. Church, I'm not saying you should not travel if the Lord has put it in your heart and it's very clear it's the Lord. But one thing I'm telling you is this. If God says stay in this land, it's because in this land, there's fruitfulness in this land. Church, did you hear what I said? I said there is what? There is fruitfulness in this land. The problem is that few people are accessing it. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see it. Look at what the scripture says. Can we read together? One, two, go. What does it say? A stingy what? Guess a what? But what? A lavish what? Guess a what? I want each of you to take what? To think it over and make your what you will want. That will protect you against what? Uh-huh. And I'm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in his giving. So you need to give this season. Sacrifice more this season. The key attribute of a king is wealth and territory. Sacrifice more this season. In summary, if you look at Abraham, what the person we are all connected to, who is our father, Abraham, is connected in these dimensions of giving and sacrifice. Give me your son, your only son, whom thou lovest. That's who he is. Give more this season. I know how some of you are thinking. I know even know how some of you are looking at. You want the pastor, how can you be telling us to be giving more? We don't even know how we're going to survive this next month. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Give more this season. That was the same story the widow was telling Elijah. He said, I'm about to eat this cake and die. Pastor, I'm at a dead position. If I eat my salary now, I'm gone. But that means you're thinking you are the provider. Stop saying that he will provide all my needs. Who is really providing? Let's say the truth. Who is really providing? Is it God that is providing or you're the one providing? Let's say the truth. Is it not when you see your salary, you have rest? Let's say the truth. If you don't have money in your account, do you see say, God, you're my provider? Is God your provider? So if God is your provider, say, give us that money. He said, ah, no, I can't give you this money. Why? Because you are the provider. God is not the provider. Because if God is the provider, you will give the money and say, the Lord will provide. You guys are quiet on me right now. I know anytime money comes into an issue, everybody goes quiet. Especially the men. Do you understand what I'm saying? The men will not say anything. They'll, they'll be watching you. It's like the men just will expect, and if the wife is beside the, the man, that's why most husbands don't sit beside the wife in service. Because when you sit beside your wife, your wife just say, you'll, 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 you'll be tapping the man. You'll be tapping the man. Please don't hear that man. You know we have not paid. You know we have not paid what we're supposed to pay. You don't be telling me the man. Oh, 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 if you want to make it, just say, check, check, your, check your WhatsApp. Check your WhatsApp. The woman has sent a message. The last bill we have not paid. This one we have not paid. Then the man, the man is almost provoked. The man is almost provoked. The pastor man is saying, I need to change this behavior. I say, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. 
Well, don't mind Pastor Mano. Don't mind Pastor Mano. There's some things going on. Hey, 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 hey. Make sure, hey, woman of God, let me tell you. Make sure you're the one telling your wife, telling your husband, man of God, we need to key him into what is going on. Let me even tell you, what we have is not even enough to carry us into where we're going to. What's the point? We're going to put it out and trust God to be the carrier of where we're going to. Church, you're not here. What you have is not enough. You know how somebody has some money and say, I'm putting it all together to pay my rent. And you see your rent and you know that it cannot pay the rent. So what you have is not even enough. Then why don't you give to the unlimited one to fix the limited? You are carrying the, you are carrying the limited and you are still shaking. You add it together. Add it together. You know how you are adding it? You are adding it. You are adding it. You check the rent. You are adding it. You are, the thing is not making sense. You add it. When it gets to a point, say, oh Lord, it cannot add up. Oh, add up. Say. Then return it to the owner and say, Lord, you are the multiplier. Do what only you can do. Woo, church. Church, I sense in my spirit, there are some of you here, your lifting is not in addition. Your lifting is in multiplication. You know, there are different types of lifting. There's a lifting where you go from primary one to primary two. But there's a lifting where you move from primary one to SS2, SS3. You see, when you move to that kind of movement, we will know that it is not man that lifted you. It is God that lifted you. You know, there's some lifting. We will know that man can also do this. But there's some lifting. We say, no, man cannot do this. I pray in the name of Jesus for somebody here. I pray that what man cannot do, I pray that the Lord will show up for you in the name of Jesus. I said, I pray that the Lord will show up for you in the name of Jesus. Give. That's what we're talking about. The kingdom requires and runs on strong financial resources. So let me tell you, everywhere you're all sitting now, we run on financial resources. Church, I was going to tell you, maybe I should shoot it in now, that every time we have a cool service like this, half a million are just gone. So every time we spend three hours and we're all taking AC, I say, oh, everybody, you are taking, you're not taking AC, you are taking money. Did you hear what I said? You are breathing money. As all of you are calm now, enjoying the atmosphere, half a million just went. On Wednesday, half a million just went. Are you getting me? So when you come and say, oh, pastor, the service was good. Now, in reality, yeah, the service was good, but the AC too was good. Praise God. Talk to me, church. I said, talk to me, church. If you really know that service is good, is that let's switch off all the ACs. Talk to me, church. Let's switch off all the ACs. The other day when our generator had an issue and, and, and everything was down and the AC was not on, I could see people, even though they were worshipping, but they were going through a lot. But because they were not used to it. You know how you're worshipping? That's how we know whether the presence of the Lord is in the place. Because when you see the breeze of the Holy Ghost, you won't feel heat. So there are financial things going on now. So when they come and they're asking you to give your offering, it's not even about offering. What are you giving an offering? When we're talking about financial things going on, we're talking about people who have made a covenant with the Lord and say, listen, as far as I'm in this church, there will no one day they will not be able to use their generator in this house. That's covenant. That's covenant. And when you are doing covenant, listen, boys don't do covenant, men do covenant. Because when you're going to do covenant, it's a major decision. It's between you and your father. You lock it up. I get what I'm saying. But I can tell you, as you lock it up, you unlock heaven. Listen, I know. Listen, listen, listen. I know there have been a lot of charlatans that have bastardized the message that relates to how God sponsors his house to get it done. Forget about all this pay tithe. If you don't pay tithe, you don't prosper. Forget about all those, all, all, all those stories. That's not the story I'm talking about. I'm talking about being a partner to God by yourself. That's what I'm talking about. If you think that God doesn't run on that, look at, even Master Jesus was not running on miracles on earth. Jesus Christ was not running on miracles on earth. That's not what he was running to run the ministry. Some of you felt that Jesus Christ was just, anytime he needs fish, he, he needs bread and fish, bring it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we need food, bring it here. That was not how they were moving in ministry. Pastor, what do you mean? Yes, you know that time they were going to pay for money, to pay for their bills, to pay for their tax. Yes, he sent somebody to go and pick a fish by the sea. I agree. He picked the fish from the sea. They got money out and they paid for their bill. But do you think that was how he was paying for all his bills? That's not how he was paying for all his bills. Look at how he was paying for all his bills. Can we read this one, one to go? Soon afterward, Jesus went through what? Preaching and what? Of the kingdom of God and the word. And see verse 2. What's verse 2? Also women who have been what? Cured of evil spirit and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had expelled. And look at verse 3. Jonah, the wife of Chusa, Eros household manager. And Susanna, I pray for Susanna in this place. Father, I trust God for Susanna in our church. I pray that Susanna will rise in this church. 
Oh, if you don't want to say amen, no problem. I pray that Susanna will rise in this church. There's somebody here, you shall be called Susanna in the name of Jesus. Now, look at what Susanna is. He said, and Susanna and many others, who did what? Who ministered to and provided for, for him and them out of their word. You are reading so low. Out of their word. Properties. So when Jesus was going from sheep to sheep, people don't understand that concept. When he was going from sheep to sheep to go and minister, you think those sheep were free? You don't know those sheep were like entering uh, flight tickets, moving from one town to another. Jesus was moving everywhere. Somebody was paying the bill, paying the bill. Susanna, 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 Susanna was paying the bill. Susanna, master, what are you doing today? Oh, we're going to be having dinner. Okay, master, no problem. We'll set it up. Oh, master, where are you going to? The hotel. When they were moving from town to town, Jesus was staying in hotels. He wasn't staying in people's houses most of the time. He was staying in hotels. So those people were saying, who was paying for it? Susanna. The wife of Chusa. The babe Joanna. Fakene meno so pretish da bakura nestaba. Lord, raise Joanna in our midst. Ah, God help us. Lord, raise Susanna in our midst. In the name of Jesus. I said, Lord, raise Susanna in our midst. Oh, can I get a better name? I said, Lord, raise Joanna in our midst. So, so the ministry of this kingdom runs by people. Bolu is no miracle. For Larry, it's no miracle. You know, some people say, Pastor, don't worry. The Lord has given the vision. The Lord will provide for the vision. How does he provide for the vision? He provides men that will provide for the vision. He raises men that will provide for the vision. In such a way that when I say, hey, men of God, we're going this way. Pastor, what are we talking about? $10,000. I say, hey, Pastor, we are here. And when you say we are here, what goes on is that God will sponsor what belongs, what is in your hand. Because you are a kingdom treasurer, he will put it there so that you can put a portion into the kingdom work. That's how it works. I will never forget the day I made a decision. I said, Lord, I want to be part of the kingdom treasurers. I made that decision. It wasn't easy. A test happened. I was checked. And afterwards, every money that comes into my hand, I knew it's not mine. Even most of the time, I always ask, Lord, who owns this one? Who owns this one? I started with Naira, and I got used to Naira. One day, a test of dollar came, and they gave me something. I knew it was dollars, but I didn't want to open it. Now, because, you know, when you open it too, you, you may start getting a bit confused. And you might start thinking, should I drop it? But I started getting used to it. Now, it's not a big deal anymore. No matter what comes in my hand, I say, Lord, who owns it? And let me tell you, things have never stopped coming because I made a decision to be a treasurer. I pray in the name of Jesus that treasurers will rise in this place. Time will not permit me to tell you that when you are going to give, there are dimensions of giving. People have always been confused. So, Pastor, how do we approach this? There are dimensions of giving. What posture should we have as kings this season? Change your giving strategy. Change your giving strategy. Sacrifice more. I used to tell people, don't always think. Anytime they want to do something in this church, let's say it's 10 million. Don't be thinking, oh, I will give 5 million. No, that's not what we're saying. We're saying that, hey, just make sure you are part of the tree. You can, it, might be your, it might be your the little you have, but be part of the tree. Just make sure you're part of the tree so that when the tree grows up, your portion is there. So that when the Lord blesses the tree, some would dispel to you. But people don't understand. People will say, Pastor, but I don't have. You don't understand. The reason why you don't have is why we're creating this strategy so that you can learn from him. The system that the heaven of praise is a system that you'll be able to come into the place of giving. Give. Pastor, how do I give to give to the Lord? Give to the Lord. Honor the Lord. Give in thanksgiving. You know, all of you that always come to church and I see you on Thanksgiving Day, you dance your whole heart, you do all of that. Great, great. But have you thought about it? That you can get to a point and you tell yourself, no, no, this money for food, I won't eat today. I will give to the Lord. Do you think God will not honor it? Give to the Lord. Give to the Lord. 
And let me tell you, when I say give to the Lord, don't be thinking I say give to this church. That's not my trouble. I mean, by God's grace, God has been faithful to us. God has been doing what he needs to do. I can't count how many times we've gotten money from people who are doing things that needs to be done. I just told you half a million is being spent on the AC that happens here. All the generator, half a million is going. That means in a month, we've done almost 2.5 million. And it's going on every month. By God's grace, we have not borrowed. God has been faithful. God has kept us going. But some people are rising up. And I pray in the name of Jesus that Joanna will rise in our midst here. Give to the Lord. Give to your parents. Some of you are very selfish. Give to your parents. How can you have three cars and your parents is not driving one? How can you have four cars and your parents is still entering, they are still entering buses? There's something wrong. Give to your parents. Hold on your parents. I, I'm an orphan. So I, I, I thank God I did what I would do before my mom and my dad left. I'm an orphan. For some of you that are not orphans and you have parents, and I'm doing it now to my uncle. I'm making sure he's my, my uncle is like my father. So I'm checking on him. I'm giving as much as I can give. Honor your parents. It's a, it's a trigger. When you honor your parents, you don't know. You have triggered something in the spirit. Honor your parents. Because when your parents bless you, there's some prayers. There's some prayers that will not come into manifestation. It will only come because your parents have gone to their knees and said, my son will not die. My daughter will not die. It's your parent that is pouring. So do you understand? One day, one of my sons sent me a message. When he sent me that message, not that he gave me a gift, but he sent me a message. That message stayed in my spirit. I was encouraged because his son sent it to me. His son sent it to me. Honor your parents. Sometimes don't look at them and say, ah, eh, what are we going to give to her? Eh, she doesn't like this. Give to your parents. Honor your parents. If you are staying, some of you watching me online, if you are staying in the UK or you are staying in the US, once in a while, pull your parents to come to places where it's not cold. Though. But bring your parents, let them come and enjoy and have good time. Spend time with them. Give to your parents. Give to kingdom projects. This is the one I love. Give to kingdom projects. And when I say kingdom projects, again, I'm not saying to our church, but give to kingdom projects. Pastor, what does that mean? When the Lord blessed them in Egypt, you remember when they were living in Egypt, God gave them silver. God gave them gold. Guys, watch this. God was giving them gold, giving them silver. How would you think that you are going into the wilderness and God is giving you gold and silver? Please, what will you use gold and silver to do in the wilderness? But when they got to the wilderness, God now said, hey guys, um, I want to build a tabernacle. Please, can you guys give me off what I gave you? Do you see that? God was not placing demand on what he has not given. He placed demand on what he gave them. Now, some of you are so selfish that when the Lord has given to you, when he now comes to place a demand, you say, Lord, 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 pass, uh, jump and pass. Because you, there, was nothing, there was nothing here that I noticed that you gave me. I worked hard to get this. I worked hard to get this. You have forgotten that the life you have to walk was given. Church, are you here? Are you here? I'm sounding a bit not together with, with the way I'm, I'm saying on, on the teaching of this given. But I just want to be as, as strong because of what is coming. Because I cannot, it's not easy that few people in this kind of a big house, few people are experiencing some dimensions of wealth when it's supposed to be everybody. It's supposed to be everybody but few. And because it's few, you find the few begin to create a rank among themselves. And because the people are low and the people are playing a rank among themselves. Meanwhile, God wants to raise kings amongst everybody. Kings. God doesn't like disparity. He doesn't. God doesn't like it. That's why he's given a picture to all of us to be able to access. But you see, if you don't make a decision, you can, if you don't decide and say enough, enough of trying to play where other people are playing, there are two camps in this house. There's a camp that says, let them be doing what they're doing. There's a camp that says, I want to be part of what they're doing. There's a camp. Every time we have service, there's a camp that says, what are they doing? I want to be part of what they're doing. There's a camp that says, well, let them be doing what they're doing. And you'll be seeing what they're doing, but you don't experience what they're doing. Who do you give to? Give to those of house of faith. Some of you don't know that there are people here that need help. Give to the people of the house of faith first. Give to people with the house of faith. Give to them. Give to the poor. I'm not saying you should not give to the poor. Give to the poor. Identify the poor. There was an exercise my wife and I did. I've said it here before. We did it years ago. Almost, almost 14 years ago. 
We just decided because we saw it. We saw it. I saw a message. Somebody was preaching. That's why I said, be a practitioner. I saw somebody preaching a message and he was talking about how they came out himself and his wife and they were giving to people that could not give back to them. They were not looking at for them to give back. They just started giving. I just told, oh, I said, Angela, come. See what this man is saying. Can we do it? And she said, okay, let's try it. That's how we tried it. What did we do? 30 days. 30 days, myself and my wife. We started giving to everybody on the street that could not give back. We gave to mechanic. We gave to breast seller. We gave to uh, those guys that do uh, plantain, uh, all those stuff. We were giving to all of them. He even got to a point when I gave to my organizer. When I gave to that guy, the guy was shocked. He started greeting me. You know how those people are like, greeting me. I said, ah, what did I do? You know, people always think they did something for them to receive. Uh, that's what's wrong with us. We always say, I, I, did I do anything for this man that is giving me something? You don't need to do anything for God to bless you. But that's another case. So we started giving. We started giving. When it got to a point, there was a day like that. It was about 11.30. And I asked my wife, have you given? He said, no, I've not given. I said, I've not given. No. We came out at 11.45. We were driving around because we have given so many people on the street. So we didn't want to give them twice again. So we're now driving around. Who are we going to give? We're not saw one man. I don't know whether it was a suya man. We just, we just packaged what we wanted to give. We gave to the suya man. We don't know the man. We gave him and we left. Church, we did that thing for 30 days. NIE, nothing happened, no. So it wasn't as if I gave eh, in 30 days. You know, you know those, uh, those lottery all of us play. I get what I'm saying. When you have not given us, uh, I'm waiting. <laughs> no, no, that was not the mind we went with. We went the mind that said, Lord, I just love this experience. I just love that I'm doing it. We're joyful. For years, nothing moved, not even a rain, no cloud, no nothing. Nothing happened. That's what the Ecclesiastes says. It says, so in the morning, so in the night. So in the evening, you don't know which one will hit it. You don't even know. One day, one day was like a rain. One day was like a rain. Then you cannot begin to say that scripture in Amos chapter 8. Is it 8 verse 3? Is it 8 verse 3 that says that the blessings will be catching you. As you are finishing one, the other one will pop up. Eh? 9.13. He said, the blessing will be catching you as you put your leg in this one. I don't want to happen. As you put your leg in this one. That's what started happening to us. All of a sudden, if I put my leg here, he said, they're calling you here. Ah, okay, sir. I'm here. No, no, they've called you here. Oh, all right. I'll do a meeting here. Ah, oh, 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 they've called you here. Ah, when they've called you here. All of a sudden, a fragrance of attraction hit us as a family. Fragrance of attraction. It's called the fragrance of favor. People who don't desire to want to bless you. The other day, my, the other day, means I just got a message from HOF. Someone just sent a message. He said, they are trying to look for your size. I said, what do you mean that they're looking for my size? He said, no, they're looking for your size because they want to get you something. Yourself and PA. I said, no, wow. I said, what's going on here? Somebody just decided, I said, okay, we want to give this guy something. All right? Hey, but you don't know what's also going on there. I have honored my father and my mother. I have honored my parents. I have honored, the, I'm going to say now, I have honored the man of God over my life. Some of you, everything is about your family. Your vacation is your family. Your everything you do is your family. Your family cake, your family birthday. Your everything is your family. No, no, no. Give to your family. Uh -huh, now I've come to your family. <laughs> but do you see, before I came to your family, give to the Lord, give to your parents, give to Kingdom Project, give to, then give also to your family. The Bible says, he that cannot provide for his household is worse than if he does. Some of you don't take care of your wife. Some of you don't bless your children. Some of you don't give them stuff. You don't bless them. Everything is about you. Give to your family. Funny enough, you should be the one to eat last after everybody has eaten. I'm not talking to the men here. You should be the one to eat last after everybody has eaten. I'm not talking to the men here. I said you should be the one to eat last after everybody has eaten. I'm not talking to the men here. Oh, let me repeat again. You should be the one to eat last after everybody has eaten. I'm not talking to the men here. Oh, let me talk to my area. My area in Igbo area. Igbo men, you should be the one to eat last after everybody has eaten. I'm not talking about your hair here. You know when you buy when you buy pizza and you put it on the ground, Philip, when you buy pizza, you not see. When you buy pizza, you know you are the dog of the house. It's your own pizza they will, they will bring like this. Wait, let your, let your father eat. <laughs> it's not scripture. You should be the last person. Have they eaten? Has everybody taken? Have they eaten? Have they eaten? All right, big man. Hey. 
No, I know our wives do it a lot. I know our wives do it a lot. Listen, wives, let me tell you. I know you do it a lot, and what, uh, which is good. I mean, there's nothing wrong in honoring your husband. But you see, when it comes to your family, sometimes let the man understand that you are the carrier of the family. You carry everybody like this. So everybody must feel restful before you get your rest. Not that they will put, not that they will put different kind of meat and fish inside the, inside the soup. And I say, hey, that's daddy's fish. You remove the fish. You remove it. <laughs> Pastor, don't go there. I, remove, remove this one. Remove this one. Remove this one. Hey, all, all of you, you can be roughing. No. No. No, I know they do it too. I know it's your culture. I know it's your tradition. But sometimes, sometimes, guys, sometimes, guys, allow it. Let your, be the man, be the burden carrier. Listen, if you can't do it in food, you will not do it when there is want. If you begin to learn to do it in plenty, you will do it in want. Because there will come a day, there will be want in this family that you will be the one that says, let, let everybody eat. Say, daddy, you've not eaten. Don't worry. I'm okay. Even your children will not know that daddy has not eaten. Because daddy, that you have not eaten doesn't mean you should not be smiling. <laughs> because if you have not eaten, and the children do one funny stuff, and we show you the I'm suffering. Yeah, have, you seen, have you seen parents that do this? I'm suffering for all of you. Paying your school fees. No, don't pay it. Who brought me here? No, let's have a conversation, dad. Who brought me here? Did I ask you that I want to come here? Why did you meet my mom? How did you? Why, how, why? You should have just. Why are you praying that God should bless you with a baby? No, you should have just stayed with your wife now and be enjoying yourself. But you were praying when my when your wife could not give birth. Say, Lord, open that womb, open that. You didn't know I was the one you were calling, sir. Now nah, I've come. Now you're not saying. You're not, come on, man. What are you talking about? I'm here now. You're not saying. You're not saying I'm a, I'm a liability. I'm here now. You're not saying I'm eating too much. I'm here now. You say I'm, I'm wearing things too much. What kind of what kind of standard did you create in the family? You say, oh, we're a family of excellence. Sir. We're a family of standard. Now I want to buy shoes. You say, Daddy, I want this class. You say, what? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. For balance. For balance. For balance. I'm not saying that the wife should not honor their husband. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying that the man, did you hear that? The man should create a concept in the house that they, all the family will know that our dad always take us first. He is not first. They are first. I just born so many men's cable now. Do you know, Mena, do you know, Mena, that some men will want to do vacation. They will take themselves to be in business class. Watch this. This one pained me so much. They will take themselves to be in business class. They will not put the wife and the children to be in economy. What is wrong with you? There's something wrong with you. You've forgotten that your family represents you. You don't know. Your family represents you. You carry the friend. I will even prefer, that's why I like my Igbo brothers. I prefer that your wife, and let them be in the first class. You'll be suffering the economy. So that when they come out, they're looking good. When they're looking good, sir, you're looking good, sir. Please tell the, man, tell the man by your side, don't get angry with pastor. Don't get angry with pastor. I know certain men are looking like, I, I can even send some men just watching me like this and say, pastor, continue. We were, we, were, we, were meet. we were meeting G12. We were meeting G70, pastor. We're going to discuss this issue. This one you just raised today. That you are saying that hey, we should be, Yes! Let them be first. And for those who have not gotten married, better get this experience before you get married. Don't come with your immaturity and you're thinking you are the one that we should be serving because you learned in your head somewhere that you are the head of the house. So because you are the head of the house, so everybody submit to the head. What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? You don't understand what it means to be the head of the house? Let me remind you what it means to be the head of the house. Because there was one day I was posing to my wife and I said, hey, hey, honey, get, hey. Only get, don't get it twisted. I am the head of this house. Don't get it twisted. I run this house. That's what I was telling her. And the woman just looked at me like this. I, I, till today, I, it must be the Holy Spirit that spoke to her. Because my wife would normally not react like that in those days. She looked at me. He said, honey, you are the head. I've never contested it. You are the head of humility. You are the head of patience. You are the head of long suffering. In that, she now started mentioning all the fruit of the... I said, hold oh, on, that's not what I mean. What do you mean by head? <laughs> I don't, who is head of humility? What's wrong with you? 
<laughs> Who is head of patient? <laughs> okay, you are the head now. <laughs> if you are the head, then you should start it first. You start the patients first. That means when there's an issue between the husband and the wife, it's the husband that should go and say, honey, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're the one that should start it. Because you are the one. <laughs> How can you be the head? And the only way you like the head is, hey, what are you doing there? That's the only head you know. You don't know that that's not how God, was re- how God was operating. When God said, I am the head of the church, he said, I gave myself. Did you hear that? I gave myself for the church. So if you are the head, you give yourself, sir. Yes. You should be the sacrificial lamb, sir. Yes. When armed robbers come to your house, they say, who is dying first? Come out first. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, my God, my God, my God. I celebrate all the men in this house. I said I celebrate all the men in this house. I said I celebrate all the men in this house. Can we celebrate the men in this house? Celebrate the men in this house. Hold on. Now look at the man by your side and say you are the head. Tell the man you are the head. Tell Edgar you are the head. You are the head. No, look at the man and say you are the head. Tell the person you are the head of patience. Oh, the person is not answering. Tell the person you are the head of humility. The person is not looking at you very well. Tell you are the head of long suffering. Head of long suffering. You are the one that should suffer long. You are the one that should suffer long. Not your wife, not your children. You should suffer long. Oh my God, let me close in this place. Lift up your hand and let us worship the Lord. We'll continue again. We'll continue another session on this. I didn't mention that you need to give. Go to the next slide. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mention this that you give to your pastors and your ministers. Now listen, I'm going to say this one when we meet again. Now, the reason why I'm going to say this is this. Because some of you don't know what triggers. You don't know. <sighs> you know, some of you look at and say, what does he need? No. It's not what does he need. It's what do you need. Some of you look at, you know, there's some things I do. I'm going to share some things with you in the next meeting. I'll share, I'll, uh, I don't know whether i share it in public. If God permits me, I'll share it. So that you guys can know how certain things trigger. You don't arrive at certain destinies until you provoke it. We don't wait for things to happen. We make things happen. Church, please, I'm tired of people waiting. Move. Make things happen. Make things happen. Hallelujah. Keep up with it. Thanks for watching the Potter's House of Lagos Global Broadcast. For more information, please visit www.thepottershouseoflagos.org. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms to stay up to date with everything we're doing here in this ministry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.